Now that we have working spawn rooms for both teams, we can move on to the last step in creating our first map's logic, the game mode. It's a good idea to start off with a simple mode. A lot of new mappers come into mapping with grandiose ideas of new custom game modes or other ways of drastically breaking the mold. This mindset is not bad in itself, but you have to learn how to crawl before you can run. Save those unique ideas for when you have a solid understanding of the engine and know what you're capable of as a mapper. For now, just start off with the basics. Understand how the logic works in the stock game modes, get your gameplay concepts down, and get a solid base of knowledge to work off of. For this reason, I recommend starting off with Arena or King of the Hill for your first mapping project. The logic is very simple in these modes, and the core gameplay concepts are very easy to understand. You don't have to worry about any rounds changing, setup gates, or any complicated payload cart logic. Now technically, Arena is the easiest mode as it doesn't require spawn rooms or door logic, but the downside to it is not very many people really want to play Arena these days. As your first map, you don't want anything else going against it, giving players a negative experience, so for that reason I recommend the next easiest to set up, a very popular mode, King of the Hill. But I'll teach you how to set up both these modes today and ultimately leave that decision up to you. Before we get fully started, we're going to clean up our test map here. We're going to say goodbye to our very first prop, health and ammo pickups, and the test spawn point. We're also going to say goodbye to our old faithful companion, the train. I'm also going to move our filters, the environment light, and our pickups off to one side to clear out the middle of our map to make room for some game mode logic. Next, I'm going to split our map into a new version to show you how arena mode is set up. Even if you aren't necessarily interested in creating an arena map, it doesn't hurt to learn how it works. First I'll do a quick save to lock this current version in, and then I'm going to save it again as arena underscore first map. This keeps our original version clean so we can go back and make our cough variations from scratch after we're done here. So one of the things about arena is that it doesn't have full respawn rooms, meaning we can delete our resupply cabinets. It also doesn't block the enemy team from entering, as the last living player could just hide out and spawn and be protected by it, so we can delete our no entry visualizers as well. Last, it's pretty common for the doors to open on the round start, not by player interaction at all, so we'll delete all the triggers for our doors here. The first entity we are going to place is a TF underscore logic underscore arena. This entity tells the engine your map is an arena map. It prevents respawn, sets the announcer voice lines up, handles first blood crits, etc, etc. You get the idea. It makes it arena mode. We'll come back and set a couple outputs here later. Next we need to create a team underscore control underscore point underscore master. That's a lot of underscores. This entity makes it so when one team captures the point, they win, and makes it show up on the HUD. Everything can stay default here. Next for arena, we need to create our control point. First we'll be creating the prop itself. Create a prop dynamic, as this prop will be something that is targeted, and set it to the model cap point base. Give it a name like cp underscore arena underscore prop. Now we need to create the control point logic. This is represented in game by the hovering symbol above a control point on any CP map. Add a new entity above your capture point base. Make it team underscore control underscore point. Give it a name like CP underscore arena. This entity handles a lot of the advanced capture point logic which you can see by scrolling through. Next to print name you'll see it says to do set name. This is what appears on the HUD when you capture the point. To leave it to the default of what arena mode usually uses, you can put pound sign arena underscore cap, or put whatever the heck you want in here. Last, go to the flags tab. This tab sometimes has a handful of extra features for entities. What we want to do is check start with model hidden. This sets the entity to be invisible at the start. Arena doesn't start with its capture point active, so we'll make it visible when the capture point is available to help let the player know. Next we'll need the capture zone. The capture zone is the trigger volume you stand in that starts the capture time. So select your trigger material and create a box around your point. Size can vary drastically per map, but it should be at least as big as the control point itself. Hit Control T to make this a brush entity, and set it to Trigger, Capture, Area. Next to the control point box, we want to set the name of our team control point, so for us, CP underscore Arena. Everything but capture time stays default here now. The general default for Arena is pretty long, but varies from map to map. This is something you'll want to fine tune as you test your map. We'll just throw in 12 seconds. Now move to the Outputs tab. We want to set it so when the point is captured, the capture point prop changes team colors. This is handled by skins on the prop, which you can see here in the model browser under the skins tab. Neutral, red, and blue. Add a new output. The output will be on cap team 1. This is the red team. Set it to target our capture point prop, so cp underscore arena underscore prop. The input will be skin, saying we want to change the skin of the prop with a parameter override of 1, which is skin 1. We can select this output and hit copy and then paste. This makes an identical copy of our first output. Change it to on cap team 2 and the parameter override to 2. Now we can go back to our TF Logic Arena and go to the Outputs tab. We're going to first create an output to enable our control point entity to show up when the point is active. Add a new output and make it on cap enabled. 
This will be targeting our team control point entity, so CP underscore arena. The input will be show model. Next we're going to make all of our doors open at once when the round starts. Since they're all going to be controlled by the same thing, we can go back and rename them all real quick to make our logic simple. We'll just call them door. Now go back to our TF Logic Arena and make a new output. This time we'll set it to on arena round start and target door. The input will be open. This should be the last of our arena logic. Give it a fast compile to test it out in game. Now a problem with testing arena maps is that you need more than one player in the game to be able to spawn. Luckily we can use a bot to fill in this position. Open up the console and type in sv underscore cheats1. Next type simply bot. This will bring in a single bot and after a short waiting for players countdown you'll both spawn in on opposing teams. Take this opportunity to make sure all the logic we set up is working. The doors open at the start, the opposing team spawn room is accessible, killing the bot wins the game, and the control point locks after a set amount of time is able to be captured to win the round. It looks like everything is working properly, so let's move on to cough logic. Let's go back to our original version of the map, first underscore room, so we can split off from it again. I'm going to save it as cough underscore first map. Some of the following is going to be a bit of a rehash of the arena part of this tutorial, specifically the control point functionality, but the best way I've found to really make something stick in your mind is through a bit of a repetition, so just deal with it! Ha! With cough, we can keep all of our spawn room work in place, as the mode will be utilizing all of it. As with Arena, we're going to start with an entity that tells the game and the HUD that this map is going to be for the King of the Hill mode. Create an entity and make a TF underscore logic underscore cough. This entity can control how long our timers are for each team, and how long until the point enables at the start. The defaults are 3 minute round timers with a 30 second control point enable time. The majority of cough maps use this, so just leave it to default. Next we need to create a team control point master. I refuse to say the underscore again. This entity makes it so the capture point functions on the HUD. Everything can stay default here. Next we're going to create an entity called TF underscore game rules. This entity handles a bunch of the basic functionality of TF2 like spawn timers. Give it a name like Koth underscore game rules. Everything else can stay to default. Next we'll be creating the control point. Create a prop dynamic and set it to cap point base. Give it a name like CP underscore Koth underscore prop. Now we need to create the control point logic. This is represented in game by the hovering symbol above a control point on any CP map. Create a team control point entity. Give it a name like CP underscore Koth. Next to print name you'll see that it says to do set name. This is what appears on the HUD when you capture this point. To leave it to default to what cough mode often says, you can put in pound sign cough underscore viaduct underscore cap. Alternatively, just put whatever the hell you want in here. It's not a big deal. Next we need to create the capture zone volume where the player activates the capture. Select your trigger material and create a box around your point. Size can vary drastically per map, but it should be at least as big as the control point itself. Hit Ctrl T to make this a brush entity, and set it to trigger underscore capture underscore area. Next to the control point box, we want to set the name of our team control point, so CP underscore cough. Everything but capture time stays default here. Capture time can vary drastically between some cough maps, but we'll stick to 12 seconds for now. But keep this value in mind for the future. This is something you can tweak to affect how the map plays. If teams have a hard time capturing your middle point after it's been taken once, and matches tend to have a very one-sided timer in the end, you can always lower this a bit to test it out again and see if it helps. Now go to your Outputs tab. We want to set it so when the point is captured, the capture point prop changes team colors. This is handled by skins on the prop. Create a new output. This output will be on cap team 1, which is the red team. Set it to target our capture prop, so CP underscore cough underscore prop. The input will be skin, saying we want to change the skin of the prop with a parameter override of 1, which is skin 1. We can select this output and hit copy and then paste. This makes an identical copy of our first output. Change it to on cap team 2 and the parameter override also to 2. Next we need to make it start each team's timers when the point is captured. Add another output. Make it on cap team 1, which is red team. Target our cough underscore game rules. And have the input be set red cough clock active. <laughs> All one word together. Create another for on cap team 2 for blue team using the same target, and have it be set blue cough clock active. Now we're going to use the capture point changing hands as a way to adjust our respawn times. First you have to understand how respawn timers work. They don't operate on a set timer for each player as they die, they operate in what are called waves. These waves count down and spawn players in groups. 
You however always have to wait for one entire wave. This means that when you die, a wave could be halfway through, and you have to wait for that half of the wave plus the rest of the next wave before you spawn. By default in TF2, the respawn wave time is roughly 10 seconds. This means if there's currently 5 seconds left in the wave you die during, you will have to wait those 5 seconds plus the 10 seconds of a full wave. Meaning your minimum respawn time would be at least 10 seconds and your maximum would be 20. Keep in mind that these numbers can vary pretty drastically based on a lot of different factors though, so don't think about it too hard. Cough maps generally use the same spawn timers though, so we can set these now. What we want is for the owner of the point to have a longer spawn wave than the team that doesn't own it. So create a new output on our capture area. On cap team 1 for red team, targeting cough game rules with the input set red team respawn wave time with a parameter override of 8. This sets it so red has an 8 second respawn wave time. Now copy that and paste it in again. Change it to set blue team respawn wave time and the override to 4. Now when red captures they get an 8 second time and blue gets a 4 second respawn wave time. Now we need to do the opposite for blue team. Create a new output. On cap team 2 for blue team. Targeting cough game rules. And the input will be set blue team respawn wave time with a parameter override of 8. Now copy and paste it. Change it to set red team respawn wave time and an override of 4. Now when blue captures, it sets their timer to 8 and reds to 4. So the way this is set up, when either team captures, it will flip the spawn wave timers between them. Now we can set the default timer by creating an entity that will automatically fire at the start of a new round. Create a logic underscore auto. Create a new output on it. The output will be on multi new round, the target will be cough underscore game rules. The input will be set blue team respawn wave time with a parameter override of 6. Copy and paste this and change it to set red team respawn wave time. This is setting the default respawn times to 6 seconds as soon as the new round loads. Last we want to set up the HUD goal text at the start. Create another output. On multi new round, targeting cough game rules, and set red team goal string. The parameter override being pound sign cough underscore setup underscore goal. Copy and paste it again and change it to set blue team goal string. And that should be it for our cough mode. It's a little bit more complicated than Arena, but I promise it'll work. Give it a fast compile and we can verify it's all working in game. Spawn in and run around a bit. Make sure your capture point is enabling after the 30 seconds is up, and make sure you can capture it and the timers are working. Try switching teams and make sure you can take the point back and the timers flip properly. And that is it. We have two fully working game modes now working. The only thing left to do is design a layout for it, which we'll talk about in Chapter 3. In the next episode, we will show you some shortcuts to create all the things we've been working on this chapter with very minimal work.